uh, in this episode, I want us to implement booking of a hotel room. And for booking, we'll also process payment. Therefore, we'll be working with Stripe. Um, also, we'll be creating a date uh, selector. And we'll also be working with some global state, okay? And for global state, I want us to use Zustand uh, to do that. I am at uh, Zustand Docs. You can visit this link if you want to go to the docs. But all I want you to see is how we can install Zustand in our application. And also uh, a brief example of how to create uh, a Zustand store. So as you can see, we will just say npm install Zustand. First of all, I want to install it. So I'll just paste that command and this will install Zustand in our application. Then I'll go to our hooks folder right here and I'll add a new file and we'll say use bookroom.ts. Uh, in here is where we will actually make use of Zustand. Right here, we need to import the create function and this will be coming from Zustand. Then right here, we can create a store using that create, okay? So we can say const use book um, room, we create our hook here, uh, will be equal to now here we invoke create like that. Uh, we just pass an arrow function in here. I'll be doing it a bit different because I also need to define the types, okay, that will be involved in this particular store. But if you just want to create a simple store like this without uh, minding TypeScript and so on, you'll just invoke this and then you'll just pass this particular arrow function here you would have the set and here you'll have the various state with the various function to update the state for example here we'll be having booking room data initially it will be null uh, but i want to add some types and also we will add persistency to our state here okay so to begin with let's as define a type here so i'll just say interface and i'll say book room store and right here i'll say we will be having booking room data uh, which is this one here so we define its type here its type will be of type room data type now let's define this room data type right here. Now we say booking room data will be of type room data type, which we have defined right here, or it can be null. So whenever we are booking a room, we will include the start date, end date, uh, a breakfast, whether it's included or not, then we'll have a total price and a room, okay? Since we will be working with uh, Stripe for payment, here we will have a payment intent and this will be provided by stripe so payment intent and this will be of type string or null apart from payment intent we'll also be having a client secret this is also from stripe and it will be of type string or uh, this can be undefined Now, we will be defining several functions to work with our state. One for setting our room data, another for setting the payment intent, uh, another one for setting the uh, client secret, and another function for uh, resetting all our uh, state. So right here, I'll have set room data. This will be a function that will receive the data of type room data type and it will be returning void right here we we'll have set payment intent and this will also be a function that will have a payment
statement uh, intent of type string and it will return void so it will receive that payment intent and uh, it will return void we will have set client secret this one will be a function which will receive the client secret of type string and it will also return void okay now right here we'll have a final one a reset book room uh, which will not receive anything and it will not return anything this will just reset our state so we should be having now all these types right here right here we'll pass angle brackets like that and we'll say book room stop so once we include our types like this you can see this is complaining and actually if i check here i can see like i missed these brackets we should have these brackets then the object in there so let's do that here i can include that bracket and also a closing one right there now once we do that uh, right here we can go ahead and list the other types we'll be having the payment intent by default this one will be null right here we will be having the client secret by default it will be undefined and comma right here we will now have set room data and here we will pass like an arrow function remember this set room data is a function that we receive our room data so we will receive the data here of type room data type so now that we have this data we'll just call set method here and we will invoke it we'll pass an object and right here we will set our booking room data to be data right here we will have set a client secret this one will also be a function that we we'll receive the client secret we will update the client secret so we'll just call the set function here and we will pass the client secret so we can just pass it directly since the key and the value will be the same now maybe before our client secret we should have passed a set payment intent and we go ahead we invoke it but this will receive payment intent of type string it will be function here and we'll call set we invoke that and we'll pass the payment intent here we should have a comma here we'll also have set a book room so you can see all the errors disappeared uh, this is done that was missing now here we'll be having a function and right here we'll have set and we will reset everything our state is this and this and this so we will reset all of those so that is the booking room data and we'll set it to null then right here we'll be having a payment intent and right this we reset it to null as well and here we'll be having the current secret and we we'll reset it to undefined okay so this is now our global state which we'll be able to access using this use book room we will be able to access this state this this we'll be able to access these methods which we can use to update our state we'll be able to access this one which we can use to reset everything in our state so this is how we added the types like this and we defined the types right here it's clear right now there is one last thing that we need to do uh, i want the state to always persist okay so what i'll do right here because i want it to persist i'll import something which is a function called persist but now this will come from i think a zoo stand stroke middleware if i'm not wrong and now we'll make use of this persist 
to a persist our state so how do we do that okay first of all this set let it be stand around right here therefore i separate it like that so we have this set arrow function right there okay uh, i want you to follow clearly so that everything is clear now right here at the top i'll call persist okay this persist uh, expects to have uh, two arguments the first one will be this set function here so i cut it and i include it here so that is the first argument then you include a comma and right here we will have a second argument and here we will pass an object then this object will have a name key and we will say book room okay and this name key uh, basically it will be the name of uh, our data at the local storage okay one last thing that we will include is uh, you come right here and you will include two round brackets this is the syntax so if i save this is our syntax there now okay so persist make it to be a bit more weird you have to include these round brackets there then you include persist here first parameter of persist is this arrow function with the set the second parameter is this one where you include the name and i think we also have some other properties that you and you can include uh, to specify where you want the data to persist at if by default it will persist at our local storage okay so that is all that uh, i'll use okay i'll use local storage the default then right here we'll just go ahead and we export default and we'll say use book room just like that and i save okay so now amazingly if we go to any of the components and make use of this use book room we'll be able to access all these functions and data and the data will also persist at our local storage.